Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Today's show will be a real treat, especially for me, because I get to eat again. We had such a great response to Saturday's show with Raw Food Chefs Lissa and Nate Maris from Raw Food Romance. You can catch that on YouTube. And so we're doing the same thing today. I have a wonderful guest who's going to be cooking in my kitchen. Her name is Maureen Craig. She's one of the wonderful people I've met since moving up to Northern California. She comes to our potlucks regularly and she brings the best food. And she's agreed to make one of my favorite dishes. It's actually Adrena Burton recipe called Bliss in a Dish. It's actually Dr. Rosanna Oliveira's favorite recipe too, but she modifies it for me because I can't eat beans and she has her own tweaks. And Drina said we could make the recipe on the show. Maureen has her doctorate in nursing. She's plant-based. She's a kidney specialist working at UC Davis as a clinical nurse specialist. She's also a yoga teacher and you can take her yoga classes online. She's amazing. Please welcome her to the show. It's just going to be a moment. I have to walk over there. So entertain yourselves. I won't be able to see your comments because I'll be in there, but I'll try to run back here every now and then in case you have a question. So please welcome Maureen to the show. Hello. <laughs> got a big house. It takes a while. So, <laughs> hi everybody, and happy Memorial Day. So, how long have you been plant based? So, I um, actually was raised pretty much a vegetarian, but um, I didn't actually give up the dairy and eggs until um, I think around 2014. About ten years then, complete mm -hmm. vegan. That's yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. But you've been a nurse longer. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I um, was a nurse since 1992, I guess it's been, it's a long time, did you, at UC Davis since 95. Did you learn anything in nursing school about diet? Um, so we didn't have a nutrition class. I went to Andrews University, which is a Seventh-day Adventist um, university. And so there was a little emphasis on nutrition, um, but I really didn't understand the power of food. Um, in particular, um, patients that I work with have uh, diabetes oftentimes and hypertension, and that's how come they're losing their kidney function. And I really thought diabetes was about sugar until I had my own issues that brought me to plant-based eating. And as that happened, then I became aware that, oh, it's really more about the fat and how it impairs insulin uh, from entering the cell. What, if I can ask, what issues did you have? And if you were raised vegetarian, what, did you ever hear about a vegan diet or a plant-based diet? So um, I was raised in Wisconsin and what oh, happened geez. there- well, no wonder. Yeah, we had, my grandfather was a dairy farmer. <laughs> no wonder you had, couldn't give it up. So, um, but then also all three of my aunts died from breast cancer. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So they drank raw milk, you know, Ooh. on the farm. That was just part of the thing. You know, you've got lots of wonderful milk there. You're going to drink it. So uh, that was part of the picture. But we didn't really understand that uh, picture until, um, you know, much later and more evidence became became apparent. So um, yeah, growing up in Wisconsin, ate lots of dairy and also the eggs and we had a little farm and I, my dad was a little bit of a farmer, but he was really a math teacher. But on the side, we grew big gardens, a lot of the we vegetables. talk for one second? I got to push one button. I just realized. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, after growing up in Wisconsin, um, I was uh, struggling with my weight uh, as a teenager once I hit um, puberty and so on. And so I uh, tried lots of dietary restrictions to accomplish uh, a little more luck with that, um, but not really um, having quite the luck that I was hoping for. So continued um, in that effort and then also did a little bit of intuitive eating, trying to follow the work of like Janine Roth and really facing, um, you know, listening to your body, which was important. Um, but I didn't quite get that down until um, a little bit later. So after having my second son, I was a hundred pounds up at that point. You're you know? kidding. I can't, I, well, part of it was pregnancy. I didn't but know you were ever I had, was, had a weight issue. That's amazing. Yeah, I was I, quite happy. I had Janine Roth on the show. She's lovely. And I did take her class, yeah. but I just couldn't eat a Hershey Kiss mindfully. I just, yeah. you know. Yeah. I mean, if it's something that I feel I, I don't need to eat or shouldn't be eating, it, it didn't matter how mindful I was, you know? Yes. Um, there is definitely, uh, I think, a lot of evidence to show that ultra-processed foods are, 
are pretty much unavailable to about 40% of the population. You're going to continue to eat them beyond right. stay Beyond satiation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. So, um, yeah, around 2000, well, lots of different things happened in my <laughs> long, long life. <laughs> in your but long, long life. After having my son, I started having a little bit of joint inflammation. And I was um, probably still 60 pounds overweight after he was born. And the joint inflammation was just a mystery to me. I was like, why is this happening? You know, um, my grandmother had had severe rheumatoid arthritis. So that was rolling in my head. But I went to the doctor and they were not able to see anything on lab tests. So I thought um, I had remembered there was a lady in our church when I grew up who had um, said she gave up dairy and her arthritis got better. Mm -hmm. So I thought, maybe I'll give up the dairy. So uh, with quite a bit of effort, I <laughs> I moved away from dairy and went to um, dairy substitutes like uh, plant-based milk and, and so on. And plant-based ice cream at the time I was doing as well. And so um, it was amazing. The inflammation dropped right away within the um, two weeks that I did it. But then I was thinking, maybe that was a fluke. I need to eat dairy again. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so you had to go test it, huh? I had to test it. But of course, the inflammation came right That's back. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay, well, it's funny because I always tell people that, it, you know, because not everybody can give everything up, especially all at once. But I always feel like that should be the first thing to go, yeah. even, even before oil or sugar or meat. And yet it seems to be the... The thing that people hold on to the most so it is interesting yeah. yeah because of so many inflammatory products in it it really is linked to inflammatory conditions and in the body dr mcdougall says even when people have type 1 diabetes like his children mm -hmm. he feels it's the cow's milk yes and all the saturated fat and dairy you know it yeah it was uh it was challenging to walk away from but um the reinforcement of having less inflammation was powerful and uh, yeah, did that for a little while, kind of what I think now we oftentimes term a junk food vegan. So that's kind of where I was landing at the time. And, um, but I did even feel alone with that because there's not that many people yeah. that eat that way. Well, now there is. Yeah, I mean, a lot more. Well, if you are anywhere in Placer County or Sacramento County, or people come from up to three hours yes. for our meetups from Fresno and Bakersfield and the Bay Area, join my meetup because once a month we get together. Oh, it was yeah. yesterday. She brings this chop salad. Her and Tammy Kramer bring like, I mean, a lot of people, Dixie has been on the show. Yeah. All the people take a lot of care and bring delicious dishes that are not only vegan but whole food plant-based without sugar oil and salt clearly labeled for people with allergies and we have these amazing events with like 50 to over 100 people every month for yes and i can't tell you how much i appreciate it I because know. for somebody like me yeah. it's extremely meaningful to have a social network yeah. And so um, I first came to the Sacramento Vegan Meetup group where, with Linda mm -hmm. Middlesworth was there. And um, she has no hesitation to tell you how you should move forward in yes. your plan. <laughs> <laughs> really? Really? Like a Middlesworth? Oh, so um, she was the one that vegan? Yeah, told me I needed to give up oil. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was like, I was like, it's going too far. At the same time, Dr. Olivier was coming to UC Davis That's right. and having uh, various um, lectures. Yeah. I mean, Dr. Esselstyn came, Dr. McDougal came to UC Davis and I went to their lectures. So little bits were dropping in, but honestly, there was a lot of resistance still. I was like, that's Interesting. just going too far. But then, you know, my son was having some issues with his uh, skin and I thought maybe this oil thing might be worth getting rid of. Um, it didn't really help him as much as it helped me. Nice. I was like, okay, we're going to set a date. And we took the oil out of the house. Yeah. Was it that hard really? I mean, compared to dairy? Because I found oil was the easiest thing to take out. Um, it was, you know, I gave over $500 worth of, of goods out of that pantry to wow. the food bank that year. Wow. Because I had a lot of those veggie food products mm -hmm. and they mostly have oils mm -hmm. and processed things in them, you know, so... But um, what I did miss saying was in 2009, um, my oldest brother, who was 10 years older than me, did pass away. Mm. And that was very upsetting. But there is something cathartic um, about that death meditation. When you have somebody that you love pass away, 
Um, it helps you think about your own life. He was a super hardworking individual and, and relatively healthy living as well. He had never smoked a day in his life, but he died from lung cancer because there was radon in the soil. Oh my. And so it was um, very upsetting, but it made me realize instead of just being a hard worker, I needed to slow down and find happiness. And so that's when I introduced the yoga and mindfulness, which actually gave me room to listen to my body because uh, I would say, you know how Dr. Lyles talks about emotional ability? Mm -hmm. I have a lot of emotional ability. And so food was always a mechanism to help me um, manage that. And when you don't, when you're starting to do the intuitive eating, you're realizing, oh, I'm not actually hungry, but I'm having all these cues to eat. Mm -hmm. And so what am I going to do with this? And the yoga and mindfulness helped really bring that emotional ability back into space and I found more happiness and peace in my life. And so it was, it was more doable. And then when I was introduced into the concept of like going without oil, it was already really listening to my body and I could feel the difference as I went more and more to whole foods. It was amazing how much better I felt less inflammation. You, you know, you just don't even know the inflammation. You, yeah. have going you don't on know how bad you gone. feel until you feel better. That's the thing. Cause people habituate to feeling poorly and they yes. think, well, this is just, you know, the vagaries of old age. I'm supposed to feel that way. And that's why it can be so beneficial if they go to a place like true North and then yes. like, the lights are turned on. It's like, wow. You know? Yeah. So absolutely. it sounds like in, in addition to bliss in a dish, which is what we're going to be making, you've created bliss in your life. <laughs> yeah. Well, definitely um, in my digestive tract, which um, I really eventually found out. Yes. I had both psoriasis and rheumatoid arthritis and both of them have been healed from eating this way. So nice. very great. Now, um, does your family eat this way? So I am kind of a mixed marriage and that has created its own stress. You know, um, when I introduced this idea, it was really, um, I was alone on that path. My kids were still vegetarian at the time and that's the way I had raised them. <laughs> so when I started taking out the um, dairy products, they weren't really going there because they love their pizza, et cetera. Sure. But when they hit that puberty phase and they were more interested in their parents and all the rest, they became more interested and said, hey, let's try some of this. So um, the, the boys were both very interested in it. My husband was a big no. And so we had to, for a period, do some of the little strategies you talk about. So we had a black box in the pantry that things that I just could not see were in that box. Like, I, And for a while, I had to tell my husband, Snickers cannot be in this house because I will find them, you know? Uh -huh, uh -huh. And so um, he has a lot of love and compassion for me. So he was willing, even though he's been thin his whole life, he understood that this is what I needed. And so he helped me in that. I didn't know Snickers were your thing because I actually can make a compliant like Snickers for you if you nice. like. Yeah, like, well, the Goodman peanut chews for one are almost like a Snickers, but I do have a Snicker bar pie. Now that nice. I know that, I'll mm -hmm. make that at our next gathering. That'll be Very fun. Cool. Yeah. So, um, and then we had an extra refrigerator because uh, we upgraded our refrigerator. So he got the fridge in the garage and it, it just kept things kind of out of sight. It's, um, this was again, a really interesting experience where I would um, just like take food and just put it just a little bit away from me and notice the further the food or what was away from me. For instance, in my office, I would be like uh, putting the um, apple or uh, whatever food I was having a little bit further away. And I'd be like, oh, okay. Um, I don't think of it as much. It's not triggering me as much. And so uh, when I realized that, I realized how important it is to have in your sight, the things that you're wanting to focus on. So if you're not wanting to think about food, all the food was out of the space. Even my fruit bowl went into the pantry. And then as when it's time to eat and you're having those hunger cues, then bring the food in that you want to eat, not the foods that you don't want to be tempted with. That's so, why I say if it's in your house, yeah. it's in your house. <laughs> I have a big uh, rock, Anita from our meetup group painted me this huge rock that says it's very cool. And that is something I've quoted many times. Yeah. Have you always, cause your food, and I'm not just saying this, like, I mean, the you, Tammy, Dixie, uh, Dottie, uh, I mean, almost every, I mean, really everybody that comes takes such care to make delicious food, but you make these delicious salads. Have you always been a, a wonderful cook or has that improved or changed since going plant-based? That is an excellent question because the reality is I had almost no cooking skills. I mean, I could follow the brownie box recipe, mm -hmm. you know, that's about the extent of my cooking skills. But when I went this way, I knew I had to dedicate some time to it. So I set aside Sundays. Every Sunday was recipe day. And if that recipe did not turn out, 
it went in the bin. And because it's just too much to try and make all these healthy changes for yourself and then eat something that doesn't appeal to you. So it's like you have enough uh, funds in your grocery budget to afford to throw out a thing here and there. And so just fine tuning recipes. Some of them I would remake old recipes, but a lot of times I was diving into all the cookbooks that are available and trying different things. And eventually I had a little repertoire of recipes I love. Well, your family eats mostly this way now, don't they? Because I mean, your food is so delicious. I can't imagine like anyone not loving what you're going to make today. Yeah. So mostly they are willing to eat the food, but they have their own um own preferences with regards to food. So the boys tend to eat more pastas and, and rice dishes. You know, I am really big into the um, salads, I, as you know. And your salads I, are so good. I mean, she puts things in them that you just don't expect. Like there's always like a little dry fruit. There's always a little cherry, a little kiwi. There's always some kind of surprise. Yes, which I do find, you know, I, I like that idea of um, how Dr. Bolsowitz and several of the other gut doctors, um, Tim Spector from um, Zoe, they all talk about having 30 or more plant foods in your diet. She has 30 or more in her salad. Yeah, so <laughs> that's the goal. That's so cool. <laughs> to make sure that I get lots of um, gut healing and diversity. I had done uh, Dr. Goldner's um, green smoothies for a while, but then converted with uh, Tammy's influence to having more chopped salads. Yeah. And so I've been really happy to eat the chopped salads. I look forward They're to them so every day. good. I mean, when, when, when we have the potluck, I've been mostly I try to get to be first in line to get as much of your salad as I can. And then I'll put a little bit of rice on it. So it's like a full meal yeah. for me. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it's, I've heard Dr. McDougall talk about people with kidney disease and, and he all, well, he says, you have to go plant-based if you have that. And so are you able in your daily job ever to inf not maybe necessarily influence, but at mm -hmm. least broach the subject with patients and say, mm -hmm. Hey, you know, if you would do this, you could be a lot better and maybe avoid dialysis, for example. Yeah, so um, there is quite a bit of evidence to show that um, plant-based proteins are very low in their acid load, and the acid load really puts a burden on the kidneys. So there is a little research showing tuna versus tofu, and within uh, just a few, within an hour or two of the meal, you can see the hyperfiltration or the hard work that the kidney has to do with the tuna meal relative to the tofu, no problem with it. So beans and tofu and those kind of um, proteins, all plant proteins just end up being very gentle on the kidneys. And so, yes, we do encourage patients to go more plant-based if they can, whatever changes they're able to make um, so that they can preserve their kidney function because dialysis is like a part-time job. It's 20 or more hours a week. Oh my God, that's, I remember when I was an activity director, I used to have to drive patients to dialysis and yeah. it's like, it just ruined their whole day. Like yeah. they even did it on Saturdays and they wanted to see their family and their grandchildren. And they're just sitting yes. there all day and they would come back exhausted. Correct. Because um, the there's different kinds of dialysis. So you can do the home dialysis, which is more gentle and you won't have that exhaustion feeling, but still it's quite time intensive. But um, the dialysis where you go to the clinic, then you have the three or so hours of treatment. And then afterwards, because you've been washed or cleaned or laundered so quickly, then there's about a six hour period where you're kind of regaining your energy. And it is really challenging for patients. Now, obviously, it's um, better than the alternative for most patients. So I'm grateful that dialysis exists. But at the same time, if you can choose to keep your own kidneys healthy and you can make that difference. What a blessing. And so, yes, I love sharing this news with people and many patients take me up on it and That's kind so of lean into cool. it. Yeah. What about the people you work with? Like the other nurses or doctors or other healthcare professionals, have any of them either gone plant-based or more plant-based? Because I know I did a video for you where we're inviting them to my house, but are any of them going to come? <laughs> I think they will. Oh, <laughs> good. So that will be good. But yeah, um, I have shared it with different people as I was going on my own journey. And when I first had such success myself, I probably with too much enthusiasm told everybody they needed to do this. You did the Linda Middlesworth <laughs> technique. I, if you're watching Linda, we do love you just so you know. But with time, I've become a little more measured and, and it was actually due to the influence of my son, Matthew, who kept telling me, mom, keep it to the evidence. Don't get so much into the emotion of it. Keep it to the evidence. And mm -hmm. so I've tried to uh, lean more on evidence and let people have their own personal journey because I am not trying to be anybody's mother but my two sons. Nice. And so letting people have their own uh, choices about it. But some people, like I have a good friend, um, I told her in one meeting, 
one time about it. And she just a hundred percent went that direction. One of those people was like, that was wow. like my husband. Like he, he went, we went to a lecture. We went to Jeff Nelson's veg source conference. He heard Dr. McDougall. He was okay. I mean, like it's, I love people like that. They're, yeah. they're so easy to work with. Yes. And she yeah. just finds it extremely simple. Now that was not my journey. I actually struggled back and forth with kind of that attraction to the processed food. So it was like a longer journey for me, but I certainly appreciate those people who have um, chatted with me and struggled. And we've talked about it back and forth, trying to find ways that they can find freedom in their life. Um, and actually that's one of the things I say uh, again about yoga. One of my, of my channels kind of called happy and free yoga, the happiness, of course, we're always working to build that in our life, but freedom, freedom from things that can draw you in that you don't want. And that freedom comes from being peaceful in your life and then making the choices that you really want for your best health. And so often I'd find myself making those unprocessed food or those processed food choices. And I wanted freedom from that. So as I got more of that freedom, a lot of joy came from that. So we're going to, because I'm here, I can't be typing, but right after the show, everything Maureen gave me will be in the show notes, which is how to find her on YouTube, how to take her yoga classes, which are free, this recipe, her version of this recipe. And uh, I'm curious, UC Davis, what's the food like? Do you have a cafeteria? Is it a hospital? And is it mm -hmm. any better than the tr most hospitals? It is probably a little better than most nice. hospitals. Uh, we have uh, Chef Santana. He um, really has a farm to fork of, uh, approach, or, and so he really tries to bring in local ingredients, and we are so blessed in this area to have lots of farms, so they do bring in lots of fruits and vegetables, and they have big bags of fruits and vegetables you can actually buy right there, so you don't even have to stop by the store on your way home with little recipes attached. Um, and so they're slowly exploring more plant-based eating in the cafeteria and for patients as well. Maybe we can have him on the show. He's yeah. open. That would yeah, be cool. Might be. Yeah. When did you go for your yoga, yoga certification? What is the type of yoga you do? And uh, when did you do that? Yeah. In 2014, I went to uh, Santa Barbara, um, the White Lotus Meditation Foundation. And I took my teacher training there with uh, Ganga White. And um, so, yeah, after that experience, I started teaching in a local gym here. And then as um, my work at UC Davis allowed, they actually have UC Davis integrative medicine, where they're kind of focused on an east-west combination. They asked me to be the yoga teacher for that group. So I now teach once a week a live class, and you can connect with me after class with UC Davis integrative medicine. And you will have that information. That's Is it more of like a Hoffa style yoga you teach? It is. I like mm -hmm. that. I yeah, like the gym. Exactly. Um, there's both a chair class and then the alternate week is a mat class. Um, so if you benefit from having a chair for the balance postures and so on, it's a little more gentle. And I think a lot of people enjoy that. Chair you know, it's hilarious. So I've been going for physical therapy because I have a shoulder impingement injury and then, you know, my it's affecting my back. And every time he gives me an exercise, I'm like, this is a yoga. I mean, like it has a name. It's like nothing he's said to me isn't something I've already learned in yoga. It's hilarious that today yeah. physical therapy is just yoga at a physical therapy office, basically, yeah. you know? Yes. And one of the things that I find very powerful about yoga, well, two things. One is the breath. You work with the breath to help bring that emotional stability into your life. And then there's a lot of listening to the body and the way the body is feeling, which helps you make better choices in your movement in class and in to life, be in life yep. making choices about food. Because you notice when the food doesn't work well for you and you're like, okay, this is what I need to do. Nice. You also, I, I don't know if you still do, but at one point, I know you were working with one of my favorite people we, and she's been here and maybe she'd come in cut Dr. Rosanna Alviera. Yes, absolutely. So um, after about 10 years working with UC Davis Integrative Medicine, Dr. Oliviera stepped outside of UC Davis and runs the Plant-Based Life Foundation. And so I volunteer with her group. And um, I love that group because it's so dedicated. Now it's largely an online group, but every week we meet and support each other in the plant-based journey. That's nice. Well, I know you guys want to see this recipe. And so we're going to get started because her variation is like, I mean, I haven't had the original. I'm sure anything Drina Burton does is the best. So I'd love to see you make this dish. Absolutely. It's going to be lunchtime soon. <laughs> and so what I um, say is, you know, a recipe is kind of an idea and you just kind of it's go a, with it. It's a template. Yeah, yeah. And kind of work with it. So the first part that I'm going to do is I'm going to make the dressing part where she calls her balsamic vinegar. But because I have... Um, 
for many years enjoyed balsamic vinaigrette, I wanted to come up with a version of it. And I do have one that I use. This is actually a good product. I really I admire Costco because even if you can't get the like, or don't want to get this, the 4% acidity that you get it wherever you get yours in California balsamic. I've had this and I have it and it's actually a really good vinegar. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Um, this is my way of making it a little less expensive. If you have the 4% vinegars, those are a little bit more Pricey. costly. Yeah. And so what I do is I take a kind of a 50-50 blend. So here I have a can of pears. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to sit, take an equal amount of the vinegar. And so it's 50-50. And so we'll just pour this in here. Very yeah. clever. And so as this is here, a 16 ounce can, then let's go ahead and measure 16 ounces okay. of that, which is two cups. 16 ounces. Is yeah. Two I usually have to ask Alexa. I can't remember. You know, Maureen, I have occasionally reduced this to 4%, but the amount of time it takes, it turns out you don't really save any money reducing it. You may as well just buy it if you want to. So two yeah. cups right yes, in the blender. Please. Yeah, right in the okay. blender. Okay. Well, this already is a great salad dressing idea. Is this something you do when you bring your salad gigantica to our potlucks? So the one that I bring to the potluck, I do use the 4% uh, vinegar I purchase. But on my daily salads at home, I have um, I usually make this dressing and then I kind of combine. Now I'm adding a lot of garlic is what I've got oh here. Goodness. That's okay. interesting because I have a recipe so you garlic that I made even before I knew you that's in my book, The Secret to Ultimate Weight Loss. And it actually has balsamic vinegar and pears. So great minds think alike. Mm -hmm. And I also buy, what's cool about this recipe is if anybody from Trader Joe's is watching, you literally could you buy everything with Trader Joe's because they do have a balsamic vinegar. Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. yes. the, the garlic is from Trader Joe's. You're going to see a lot of Trader Joe's ingredients. And um, because I originally got this recipe from Emerald Lagasse, he, he did oil, but I do pears. And I sometimes use peaches. And now I'm using some black pepper. And you can see I'm not really measuring but I'm just tossing in some black pepper. It gives it a little pepperiness. Little kick. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're ready to blend that. And um, what I do differently when I'm making my salads uh, for the um, dressing is I add in all those things that are good for me, you know, like amla powder or turmeric and um, all the things I'm wanting to include to help increase my 30 plant-based items. Let's blend. <laughs> Okay, and we'll just set that aside and we'll use that at the and, end. And that's a lot of dressing. That's a lot of dressing. I will not use it all. So some of this will be used, uh, you know, for my salads. And afterwards. this will be actually going in the dish. Yes, it will. Okay. So where she calls for balsamic vinegar, I use this and I use quite a bit more than she uses because mm -hmm. I like to, it's just a little I bit. don't use water. She right. uses water. Got it. This kind of amps the flavor up, you know, because I like the vinegary flavor. And I like, I like that yours has, you know, some liquid to it because I like to serve Maureen's dish over rice and I've already made a pot of organic basmati rice. Huh. Next, we're going to chop some potatoes, about three cups of potatoes. Now, you notice my potatoes are actually already uh, soft, and that's because I do a whole Instapot, usually about the three pounds of potatoes from Trader Joe's. Um, just put them in the Instapot for 10 minutes. On high pressure? On high and manual pressure. And how much liquid, just like a cup or so? Uh, yeah, one to two, one to one and a half cups. Yeah, exactly. Right, and so these are And steamed. then you get, they are done, but then I let them sit in the refrigerator. So that they get that, you know, resistant starch buildup. I find that even if that wasn't good, the resistant starch, it's just the product comes out better for some reason when you cook and chill a potato. Yes. Whether you're air frying it, it better. it's just so cool. And the, yeah. the buttery or the Yukon Gold are like pretty much my favorite of the white potato family. Yeah, that's what I'm using today. And um, But if you don't have that, you could do it a different potato in there as well. And I'm just cutting them kind of into approximately one inch cubes. We're trying to make things... I would say bite-sized. You want things to fit comfortably in your mouth and not be too gigantic. So we'll put all those potatoes in the bowl. And this is one of those ingredients that, I mean, one of these dishes that is just so simple because everything just kind of gets dumped I in. I love things that are one pot dishes. Yeah. Next, we're going to take, again, from Trader Joe's, the artichoke hearts. I so love those. Those are in the freezer section. There's no salt. There's no oil like sometimes in cans you'll have. Right. So they're just the artichoke part. And you're putting it in frozen. Yeah, exactly. Because the dish is going to be um, heated for quite a while. So the juice is slowly 
blend together and you can do one or two packages depending on what you like this again is very adjustable kind of reminds me of pizza a little bit this dish you yeah know? right and you know i love sun-dried tomatoes with artichokes so although the recipe doesn't call for that i do in the end add a little bit of sun-dried that's tomatoes. cool okay let's drain our our uh, garbanzo beans and uh, we'll let you put that over there. And at the same time, I'm going to... Do you need me to rinse them or just drain them? Um, yeah, you could rinse them. Let's get some of that um, aquafaba off and make them relatively easy to stir up. And when Maureen makes me mine, which she already did, uh, she just skips the chickpeas yep. for me. Exactly. No black pepper and no chickpeas when it comes to AJ's preferences. So that's great. Or at AJ's. So, oh, wow. And these yeah. are just probably, I'm guessing, canned chickpeas, right? Like, um, so those I actually make myself. Oh, yeah. But you know, I like to buy chickpeas. Um, I eat a lot of chickpeas, <laughs> so I figure I might as well buy the big uh, bag of like 20 pounds or so, and then just cook them up in the instapot again. But um, somebody could get to 40. They, they could get a can of Trader Joe's. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or one another, can. I mean, we're not promoting Trader Joe's, okay. other than we think. Now let's awesome. uh, drain these as well. Yeah, in the, there. This is good too. I love Roasted red peppers is the next thing, and again, we're gonna. Um, just cut those into a little bit more bite-sized pieces. There you go. Are you going to cut these at all? And would, yes, you like, would you like these rinsed? A little bit. A little bit. Just a little bit of rinsing, yeah. Um, the roastedness of the red peppers, I think, um, adds a lot of nice A lot flavor. of flavor. Yeah. Do you like that product? It's one of my favorites in the freezer section of Trader Joe's. It's called Fire Roasted peppers and onions. Oh, I haven't tried it. I'm going to get it from my freezer and show it to I you. I wonder if that would work in here. Well, it works in life. That's how I make my Mexican dishes. Let me show you. Yeah, because honestly, you're always looking for ways to keep recipes super simple. And that's why I use the roasted uh, red peppers. And so I could imagine that working just this, as well. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. This is one of my favorite Trader Joe's products. Yeah, there's no reason yeah. you couldn't add onions to this. This is really a Mediterranean dish. It's called Blitz in a Dish. But uh, really, um, anything that's going to have Mediterranean flavors and or, you know, you can put eggplant in here. You can put all kinds of things in here. Um, so get creative as you're doing it. So now I'm uh, chopping up our roasted bell peppers and just making them kind of, again, bite-sized. Yum, yum, yum. Yeah, and I like red peppers. They have a sweetness to them. The green ones are unripe and they give a lot of people, including me, indigestion. Uh, sometimes I enjoy a green one, but, um, you know, like with jambalaya or something. But this one here, I really uh, like the, the roasted red peppers. Very, very and we thank you, Drina Burton, for this recipe and all your recipes. She's a wonderful recipe creator. I love her holiday loaf. And yeah. And you know, again, you're seeing my me use the whole jar. She doesn't actually call for the whole jar, but I'm like, am I really going to put some small amount back in the refrigerator? I know. I love it. Too. I, I like using say, the whole unit. Exactly. Use the whole bag, use the whole jar, whatever it is. And just go from there. I mean, you could serve this Thanksgiving. I mean, that's how good it is. It's like it is very flavorful, and part of the flavor develops because of the slow cooking over an hour. You know, and yeah. so the the flavors marinate together very well. Okay, I'm going to use my little paper towel I here. Big bowl because I have one for mixing. Uh, you know, it probably wouldn't hurt because okay. this is, looks like I'm running out of room, doesn't it? <laughs> Would be good. That'll give me a chance to. Rinse my hands as well. Somewhere to the rescue. Yay. Perfect. Thank you. Excellent. Okay. Now we're going to add um, a couple more things. We're going to add a can of tomatoes. And these are just diced tomatoes. You could use fresh ones if you wanted to. Uh, let's drain just a little bit of that liquid off. Keep it or not keep it? No, we're not going to keep it. We're just going to drain it in there just a little bit. There we go. Because I prefer the vinegar flavor over the tomato flavor. That's just me. But basically, you can dump the, the can in there. Have you ever used the fire roasted tomatoes? I have. But the fire roasted ones at Trader Joe's are quite um, blended. You know, they're they're not really holding any Got shape. It. If you don't mind that, then that's, okay. that's good. Um, and then we're going to put in some uh, golden raisins. I love golden, golden raisins. Yeah. Yeah. One, you don't see them, so it's a surprise. Yeah. And two, yeah. I just think they taste better than the... A hint of sweetness. Yeah. And then the saltiness comes from the olives. So 
This used to be available at Trader Joe's, but they've actually replaced this now with one that has oil in it. Oh, no. So I did find this one at Whole Foods. Oh, great. And so this is just with the vin in the vinegar. Oh, so nice. um, olives are, to me, an important part of this dish. I'm going to drain, maybe drain those off a little oh, bit. So, you uh, just uh, we'll use about half of those, but you can just drain off all the liquid. That's mm -hmm. fine. And then we can just go for it. Yeah. Rinse? No, no rinsing. We're gonna let them stay a little bit on the salty side. That's our little bit of salt that we get from them. Thank you. And I'm gonna just lay these on the cutting board. And because I like to actually cut them in half. Thank you. It's fun when you get the little surprise of the olive and the little surprise of the raisin. It's unexpected. And I want it to kind of go through the whole dish a little bit. So that's why I actually um, you know, spread it, spread it out a little bit by cutting these in half and getting the saltiness throughout. And Kalamata to me tastes better than regular olives. You know, my one friend has an olive orchard and um, she says that all olives will eventually turn black if you let them. So it's just a more mature um, ripe olive, the Kalamata than some of the others. But... I always like Kalamata and green better than black even. Oh, yeah. interesting. Okay. They have like the flavor. flavor. They, have, mm -hmm. they have more like robust flavor. Yes. Yes. How often do you make this dish, would you say? Uh, mm -hmm. Well, at this point, AJ, I have a lot of recipes. <laughs> so this one rotates through maybe once a month, I once would say. Once a month, wow. Um, but it was really, um, Dr. Olivier is the one who told me that she does this one a lot. And mm -hmm. so I thought, that's worth me putting some effort into checking it out. And of course, it became one of my favorites because of simplicity. You know, the things that you're going to cook all the time, you need them to be simple, you know? Yep. And so um, you get those those things down cat in your life and then it's like not a big deal you know because I make the potatoes on a regular basis I anyway, make the garbanzo yeah. beans on a regular basis so after that it's just kind of dump everything in and uh, bake it in the oven have you ever frozen it and if you were to freeze it would you freeze it before or after cooking well um I don't tend to freeze it um but if you did I would probably freeze it afterwards yeah. what I do is I just after it's real hot I stick it back in um in jars I'm going to rinse my hands again here uh, back in jars and um a lot of times this will heal up and then it'll last quite a while in the refrigerator so it's not not difficult um, oh, nice to keep it around for a while now I have got some spices that we'll talk about next so Trader Joe's has this one, which I really like. It's um, Herbes de Provence, mm -hmm. which is a French version. But the recipe actually calls for the three uh, spices, the rosemary, oregano, and basil. And so yeah, that would be the classic, like more pizza. Italian it version. Pizza. Yeah, but you can go anyway. And I am quite generous with the with the spices because you're I like really... I never measure unless it well obviously if I were using salt I'd measure but yeah. <laughs> yeah well and for this uh purpose it's just I mean it just adds more flavor you're, you're not gonna go wrong that's, with these that's got to be basil that I just this smelled. is basil oh, here. what did I smell mm -hmm. was that oregano, oregano? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yep yeah, which has definitely got that marinara flavor to it good and so the only thing I have not added is the sun-dried tomatoes and I kind of hold out on adding those until um closer to the end because they can burn a little because uh, they're so dry already so um now we're going to be baking this at 400 degrees for um an hour but 20 minutes at a time so we'll take our our dressing here and we're going to go ahead and pour just a bit of this into this and I am going to be much more generous she has like usually three tablespoons of dressing is what she, um, of uh, balsamic in the recipe, I believe. But I put quite a bit more in there. And then I just kind of do a slow bake and let this uh, slowly marinate in there and dry. Now, because it's at 400, that would be too hot if you're going to um, try and dry it out. So I usually drop the temperature a little bit and cook it longer. So sometimes it's been a couple hours that I do it instead of just an hour. Wow. I but if you put that in a crock pot instead. You might be able to, but part of it is letting the dressing dry up okay. and it comes into the food more. And so, you know, you intensify flavor as you are mm -hmm. baking it. And I do do it in my convection uh, breville, you know, so if you have a regular oven, um, you may be able to get by with a little higher temperature and may need to have a little bit more time. So I think this looks pretty, pretty mixed. We're ready to put it into our, our, our glass containers. And if somebody had a bigger one, could they do one more one? Absolutely. Absolutely. 
Yeah. Um, sometimes I do it in smaller ones because I'm going to change the recipe for one versus another. So, you know, if I haven't added the beans to it yet, then I'll, um, you know, pour, pour some out into one mm -hmm. uh, glass dish and then uh, take the and add the beans and so on and then to the next dish. Yum. So filling it in here. I cannot explain how good this is. You know, I've been raw for three days because I had two raw chefs visiting and I'm just so excited to eat this today. I know yes. for three days. It's um, potatoes are such a satisfying. lovely, satisfying dish, aren't they? Yeah. It's so hearty. So glad that we have that. That's why even without the chickpeas, it's a very hearty dish for me because yes. of the potatoes. And the artichoke hearts are lovely too. Um, they add a nice starchiness to and it. And I'm eating it over rice, so I've got starch on my starch. Yes, <laughs> that's right. You can. So after you filled it all in, then um, the recipe calls for covering it. And I do think that's good just to get it up to temperature because um, you don't want to burn the top vegetables. So every 20 minutes, you're going to stir just a bit to get it to the point where um, the stuff that's dried out a little bit more can go down into the dish and then other vegetables that are a little more moist. And at what point would you add the sun-dried tomatoes? The last the, 20 minutes. The last 20 minutes, yep. and the last stir. Yes, essentially the last stir, because you're just wanting to get just a little bit in there, because um, those sun-dried tomatoes add a new texture with the dryness of the, of the tomato. Would you add the whole bag, the whole three ounce I bag? do. Okay. Yep. That's good to know. Because I'm kind of that person that dumps everything in. Nice. So then Best we'll way take... to cook is dumping. <laughs> I exactly. love dump recipes. Yeah, it just leaves you no leftovers, you know? So uh, um, you just take them full. On the over. second 20 minutes, because we, we don't have to show this because we have a, one that's already ready through the magic of uh, YouTube. Would you would you be using this whole thing eventually? Uh, no, I would not use the whole thing. What, I, what you'll notice is after the first 20 minutes, a lot of moisture from the vegetables comes down. And then the, that during the next 20 to 40 minutes will slowly be absorbed into the vegetables and dried out. And so, um, yeah, I usually end up with some dressing left, but I am uh, definitely using more than the three tablespoons. So you're not going to add any more dressing to this. I will not add more Great. dressing. It's, you're just going to stir it. However, so you, if you actually looked at it and it was too dry, you would add a little. Add a little more, you know. So just kind of play with it a little bit as you're as you're doing it. Yeah. So four hundred for four hundred. Well, the recipe says four hundred for 20 minutes times three, so for an hour. But if you do that, you'll probably end up with uh, with a burned if you don't have the foil over the top. So I do 400 for the first 20 minutes with the foil on. And then after that, I'm trying to dry it out a little bit and make sure that dressing gets in there. So I might drop it to 350 or 325 and then just stir every 20 minutes or so. And I might go beyond the hour. So an hour, hour and a half, whatever it is. I have my, um, in the summertime, I take my Breville out to the patio. So it doesn't eat the house. You know what I was thinking is um, I'd like to try it in the slow cooker. And the reason I'm thinking that is because the next time we have a potluck, it's just, it would be such an easy way to serve it. Yes, versus, keep it warm. And then I don't have to turn my oven on when it gets hot. Mm -hmm. and, and I would I would think maybe four to six hours, it might do really do well. Fine. You know, that's not a bad idea. I'm going to try it next yeah. time. I mean, I don't know if I'll make it the next potluck, but the yeah. next time I make it. And I'm wondering, uh, so you're in the in the slow cooker, not the instant pot. Not the instant pot, okay. the slow, the crock pot. Yeah. yeah, and the crock pot does let you take some steam off. So the moisture could kind right. of slowly come out of it. Yeah, that's yeah. actually a great, great idea. That, like start it on high. Well, should we show them the finished yeah, product? Yeah, let's get the okay. finished product. Uh, you might need some gloves and yeah. they're right over there. Yeah, and I'm going to get a dish for my bliss in a dish and taste it. Yay. Do yeah. so you want to taste it too or just me? Uh, sure, I'll taste it. Okay. And did you want rice with yours or just plain? Good plain. Um, should I put the um hot? I guess it can go on the. Yeah, I think you want a plain one. Okay. Sure. Mm -hmm. I think I this get... is the one with the peas in it. And then this is the one. With the... This is the funnest part. That these ones that are going to chuck over to the side. And this is without the chickpeas. So you can kind of see the difference there. But you can see that as you cook it, it gets a little bit darker and drier, and there's a little bit of that char on things. And 
I think that adds great flavor, flavor to it. So here we go. <laughs> Here's yours. All righty. I'll let you go first. Okay, so this one, this one's mine. Without the, yeah, right. without. So I like to start with a little organic brown basmati rice. This is Lundberg, and I just cooked it in a rice cooker. Ooh, look at this. Goodness. Yay. And all those Mediterranean flavors put together. Oh, no. 10 second world, 10 second world. I know, I like a lot. That's nice. Mine. Okay. Get and it. I'm going to have this one here with a little bit of the beans in it. And so, yeah, instead of having the rice, I've got beans. So there we go. This is an open invitation to anybody that makes food this good that wants to cook it in my kitchen. You can be on the show. Okay. Maybe raise it up a little while we taste it. Look okay. Oh, my goodness. Yum. OMG. <laughs> got a blow. Mm, oh, my God. That vinegar is so good. It really enhances the vegetables. The first bite I had was the... um. Artichoke heart. Mm -hmm. mm. And the potatoes really soak up a lot of the it's flavor so as well. Good. Oh, very well, fat Mara has really good taste in recipes, doesn't yes. she? <laughs> exactly. Mm. And and that's when you find one of these recipes that is easy and repeatable. You love that. I can't imagine anybody not liking this, even if they weren't plant based. It's so flavorful. And the little bits of olive and um, golden raisin in there are just a, a delight. This is like a restaurant quality dish. I'd love to have Drina on and ask her how she like developed it because it's genius. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other recipes that you, you do in the rotation? And do you do any batch cooking? Well, I definitely do batch cooking. <laughs> my my biggest batch cooking is every week doing my salad boxes. You know, I, I do the mixed kales and collards and so on and make those salad boxes mm -hmm. with the dressing. And then I usually have some beans on the bottom of that. So that's every day. I do make a, uh, let's see, what have I got in the refrigerator right now? A lentil soup I mm -hmm. have. And then I have a um, cauliflower, chickpea and soy curl uh, tiki masala. And that's mm -hmm. quite uh, fun to make. Um, I do have a jambalaya recipe that I like to make too. So Ooh, jambalaya. Yeah. It's just fun to make. Does that have beans in it? No, no, Ooh, it's you not. You that for me sometime. Yeah. What's your favorite of all the wonderful restaurants up here? Ooh, I think our potlucks are my favorite. <laughs> <I know. laughs> because I get to try everybody's Everything. dishes and I take pictures of them. And it's like, that's really fantastic. Um, the vegan one in uh, the vegan faux restaurant in Rockland, mm -hmm. I do enjoy their um, uh, Singapore noodles. Mm. So that's one of my one of my dishes I like there. But honestly, I don't eat out that often mm -hmm. because it's just as um, more effective for me to make my food at home. It's also cheaper to eat. I mean, I mean, we went. I mean, I love. Have you been to Makuni's? No, I haven't. But okay. you told should, me that it's well, good. We could go for, you like sushi? Yeah, well, she makes great sushi. We should go for your birthday. So we, we took some friends who were visiting and it's like, you know, four people, two rolls. That's not a lot. That's like, you know, 14 pieces. Yes. It's like over a hundred bucks. Wow. Yeah. That's so yeah. expensive. Yeah. It's labor intensive is probably why it's so priced that way. But hopefully I'll get a little taste of sushi. We're going to Japan this summer and I'm going to enjoy some sushi Ooh. there, I hope. So I've mm. told our guides already that I'm looking for, uh, they call it temple food. When you're eating uh, more like we eat it, it's more like what the monks and nuns eat, I guess, in the temple. So I'll be eating temple food. <laughs> well, they are smart. They yes. eat, they eat a lot of plant-based food. Yeah. This is delicious. I hope you'll try it. Thank you, Dr. Rosanna Alvear, for recommending it. Thank you for Greena Burton for creating it. Thank you, Maureen, for making it. Thank you all for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Any final words or thoughts or where people can follow you and connect with you? They can see you in person if they come to the potluck. Yeah, see me in person at AJ's Potlucks for sure. And then um, on UC Davis Integrative Medicine, you can register to practice yoga with me. And I'd love to see you in class and do connect afterwards. I hope not to see you as a patient, though. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you again. Please come back tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific time for our resident plant-based physical therapist, Eileen Kopsoktis, for her regular show, Move Well to Age Well. She's going to be talking about arthritis, which you said you had rheumatoid arthritis. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And movement is a critical component of that, keeping your joints strong by keeping your muscles strong. Anyway, I apologize if you had questions in the chat. I, I just can't see them when in the kitchen. So come back tomorrow and ask them. Thanks so much, everyone. Happy Memorial Day. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye -bye.
Oh yeah, my husband is reminding me that I can um, encourage you to watch the YouTube channel, Maureen.yoga. So no.com, just Maureen.yoga. And you can practice any amount of yoga there that you want, all recordings.